Hey guys, today I'll talk about mobility, conditioning, strength training, and how most riders and racers have a program which is just one big shit fight. Hey guys, welcome to Moto Fit episode number two. Hope you enjoyed the first episode, so I've got a heap more to be able to go through uh, with you today. Uh, it's cooking a little bit in here. We've got these bright lights, uh, which are really heating up, plus it's summer as well. Um, so if you see me sweating uh, halfway through, that's probably why. Uh, it's not because I'm getting nervous. Uh, it's just because it's cooking in here. So we've got a couple, or another question to go through today, but we're gonna be focusing on uh, just one question today because I feel, it, feel it's, a, uh, it's a basic question, uh, but requires a fairly lengthy answer. And I think most riders and racers approach this question um, uh, at, at a basic level, that they forget the more complex level that we need to be looking at training to be able to get the best results. So uh, Jeremy, what's our first question for, or first and only question for today? Wayne Murphy asked, back to basics, what training should I be doing on a day-to-day -day basis? Awesome. So Wayne, so in terms of training for, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, at a, at a, a ba back to basics, there, there's three real components that we need to be able to, to focus on in terms of the actual training itself. So from the physical side of what you need to be doing in the gym, there's three main components that we need to focus on. So the first component that we need to focus on is being able to make sure that we start off the session with a mobility component. So what mobility is, is being able to create full range of motion through the joints in the body. Okay, so our body's designed to be able to move through a whole heap of different uh, motions, but as we've developed over time, okay, we become more sedentary, so we spend a lot more time sitting down. We don't move around as much as what we normally do, uh, which means that we tend to tighten up. So if you're not using that particular flexibility, not using that particular range of motion, uh, we start to lose it. Okay, um, so when we start to lose it, what that means is then when we go to training, when we go to ride and race, we're not as efficient at doing the movements that we need to do. Uh, we're not as powerful, we're not as strong, we have a higher chance of injury. We're not as efficient at what we do. So the first thing that we need to be able to do is work on having a mobility component. So mobility isn't just stretching, okay? So a lot of people are just doing static stretching, or a lot of riders and racers just doing static stretching, right? Just hanging off the end of their hamstrings, okay? Doing these ones, reaching out, or these ones, the usual ones, okay? Uh, but they're not really doing anything, okay? Um, they might give you like a temporary gain while you're there, um, but it's, it's gonna be nothing that's long-term that's actually showing improvement, okay? So we're really wasting our time. Uh, and we wanna make sure that we're not wasting your time because you're spending, not spending too much time in the gym. Because remember, most of your time should be spent on the bike, okay? The riding, uh, or sorry, the training side of things supports the riding and racing, okay? So we wanna make sure that you're not, you're not missing out on riding every week to go and get your training. And we wanna make sure you're getting your riding in every week and that training is there to be able to support that. So we wanna make sure we're as effective as possible with that limited amount of time that we do have. So the first component is looking at mobility. So what we need to be able to do there, and uh, we're, not, we're not gonna have a chance to be able to go through them right now, but where you guys can go is to our, or to my YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash driven athlete training. So Jeremy will put the link up for you on the screen for you to be able to go to. Um, and on there, if you scroll back to some of the older videos, I used to do a lot of mobility, a lot of uh, rehabilitation movement work. So there's a shit ton of videos there that you're able to look at and reference and be able to go through and go through those mobility exercises and learn a little bit about mobility. Um, so there's a heap of stuff there that will keep you busy for hours and hours. So you need to be able to go through those exercises. So this is actually actionable stuff. Go to the YouTube channel, scroll down to the videos, they're all free, okay? Go through uh, several of the videos, maybe put half an hour, an hour aside, go through multiple videos, Pick out all the exercises that you found most effective for you. All the mobility exercises you found that worked for you, okay? Um, and then be able to implement them. So we wanna be able to make sure that we pick the three most effective. 
So you might go through 10 exercises, okay? You might do 10 of them, and you're like, oh, these are the three that I found really effective that I noticed a difference in before and after, okay, as soon as I did them. These are the ones that I really know I need to improve in. You pick those three. One of the, the bigger mistakes that racers make is they'll, they won't have a set program for the mobility. Number one, they don't have a set program at all. And then with their, their, tra their stretching, or their, sorry, their mobility, they don't have anything uh, set out that allows them to be able to progress. They're kind of hopping around. You want to be able to measure your mobility and flexibility exactly the same way you measure your speed on the bike, okay? Or measure your improvement in training, or measure benchmark tests that you have. You want to be able to measure that the same way. Um, and the only way to be able to do that is have those three and be consistent with them with every training session. That's how you're going to be able to see the progress. So that's number one. Um, so I hope everyone, I hope everyone understands so far. Number two, we then need to work on a strength component. So like we talked about, I won't spend too much time on this because we went through that in the previous episode, but uh, Wayne, what we need to be do doing is we need to be able to make sure that, with our, that we're focusing on building strength, okay? And that needs to be through those multi-joint movements. So that needs to be our next component, made up of three to four strength training movements. As you get more advanced, and with, like, with our guys that we work with, uh, when they start to get more advanced, okay, and they're comfortable with the basic movements and the foundations, then we can move into Olympic lifting and working on speed and explosiveness. But you can't work on the speed and explosiveness if you don't actually have the strength there in the first place, okay? What you'll find, especially when you're, you're, you're starting off, when you're getting going, okay, you've got a heat more to be able to get from gaining strength. So when you gain strength, everything else improves. Your conditioning improves because you're more efficient, okay? Your power improves because you're a heap stronger. Um, your speed improves because you're a heap stronger, okay? Um, everything starts to increase. Then when we start to we build that nice strength base, then we can work on the Olympic lifting and the more technical stuff, but you can't just skip to that stuff and hope that you're gonna get better results because that Olympic lifting stuff isn't gonna benefit you if you haven't got that solid base of strength. So that's the strength component. The next component, or the, the final component of your training program, is we need to be able to work on having a conditioning component. So I'll spend a little bit of time on this uh, today to be able to go through. So what happens is we need to be able to mimic the intensity of race day, the intensity of ride day. Probably one of the biggest mistakes that a lot of riders and racers, racers make with their training. There's a lot of trainers and a lot of coaches in the motorcycle industry, especially at a very high level, that have endurance and cycling backgrounds that are helping out people in the motocross industry, road racing industry, uh, motorsport industry in general. The biggest misconception that a lot of coaches make is that riders and racers are endurance athletes, okay, when they're actually more strength athletes. Now I'll explain. A cyclist has a five kilo bike, okay, plus their body weight of 70, 80, 90 kilos, whatever they weigh, okay, maybe a total of 100 kilos. A rider and racer has a 100 kilo bike plus a 70, 80, 90 kilo rider on it. So that's almost, uh, that's double the amount of weight that a cyclist is using, okay? A, run, a, a, sh a shit ton more than what a runner's using, a shit ton more than what a swimmer's using. I know we touched on this previously, okay? Um, you need to be able to have solid strength training in your program. The longer distance cardio stuff, okay? If you're going cycling for hours, if you're going for long runs, if you're going for long swims, okay? Then you are working the complete opposite of what you need for race day. Think about this, or answer this question for me. When you are out on the track, are there parts of the track that are more physically demanding than other parts of the track? Okay, so in other words, are there parts of the track that are maybe rougher that require a heap of physical effort, a heap of intensity, and then likewise, maybe some other parts of the track where you're floating through the air over a jump or going through a big banked corner where it's not as intense or not as physical? The answer to that is yes. The track's always fluctuating, okay? Even going into a corner compared to going around a corner. If you've got heaps of braking bumps, that's what's gonna require a heap of effort. If the corner's fairly smooth, it's not gonna require as much effort. So the intensity is constantly going like this, all the time, up and down, up and down, okay? But most riders and racers train at a constant intensity. They'll go and cycle for an hour and a half, two hours, three hours, go and run 10 Ks a day, okay? Go and swim a couple of Ks a day. And that's at a constant intensity because it's impossible to carry a super high level of intensity like you do in racing when we have that extended duration of training. So when we're out doing our endurance training, cycling for Ks and Ks and Ks, we have a constant intensity. We're, we're focusing on keeping a constant speed, okay, relatively constant speed. I know we're gonna have uphills and downhills for a long period of time. So we train like this, okay? And this is where the problem comes, where riders and racers have a, uh, an issue turning on the intensity switch on race day. 
because they train at a constant pace, then expect to get there on race day and be able to perform and automatically turn on that intensity within the initial lap, and they can't do it because they haven't been training that. So what you need to be able to do is get rid of the cycle and get rid of the longer distance stuff, okay? And you need to be able to focus on what we call interval training. So interval training is short bursts of high intensity activity. I'll give you a sample workout, something you can actually execute on. Instead of going and, uh, let's say, sitting on the cycling bike, okay, for an hour or going cycling, what I want you to do is grab an exercise bike, sit on it, put 10 minutes aside. You're gonna do 20 seconds of work, absolutely flat out, the hardest that cycling bike's ever gone, that exercise bike. 40 seconds of complete rest, zero, not moving. And you're gonna repeat that 10 times. Now, if you do that effectively and you give that a true 20 seconds absolutely flat out, that will be a shit ton more effective than going for a cycling ride for an hour, hour and a half, okay? If you're a rider or a racer. If you're a cyclist, then you probably shouldn't be watching this video in the first place. But that's what we need to be working on there is that interval training. The other thing, because strength is so important as a racer and you need to be able to develop that, uh, Wayne, what's, what we need to be able, I'm losing my voice here. Because strength is so important, what we need to be able to do is we need to be able to make sure that we have our conditioning or our cardio working together with our strength, okay? They need to be working together, okay, like this, not like this, all right? Um, so what that means is that when we have the longer distance cardio, let's just say you're cycling Ks and Ks and Ks and Ks a week, all right? Like a lot of riders and racers do, especially at a high level. Cycling causes what we call muscular atrophy. What that means, okay, is that your, uh, your level of muscle mass and level of strength is going to decline, okay? It's gonna reduce. The reason it does that is because when you're on the cycling bike, we're more focused on pure endurance. But remember, we're not endurance athletes, we're more strength athletes, okay? So we need that strength. It doesn't matter how many Ks you can do on the cycling bike. Ramp your cycling up to five hours a day. Okay, it's still not gonna make a difference for on the bike because you don't have the strength there. If you don't have the strength, you don't have the strength. And when we're training that, when we're causing that muscular, uh, muscular atrophy, muscles are getting smaller, muscles aren't as strong because we're not promoting strength, okay? We're promoting more endurance. What that means is it works against your strength training. So when you're going out there and, and, and lifting the weights and then we're combining that with the longer distance cardio, whether that's through cycling, whether that's through swimming, long distance runs, they're fighting against each other. So we've got one thing trying to make you stronger, the weight training, one thing which is trying to pull you back and improve more endurance, what starts to happen? Boom. They equal each other out. So in other words, you go to train and it's like training with the handbrake. Now imagine driving your car down the road and having the handbrake jammed on all the time. What do you think is gonna happen? Obviously the car's gonna be doing all the work but you're not gonna re really be making too much progress. Exactly the same thing happens with mo most riders and racers training is that they just don't have the right exercises and right um, conditioning uh, and right mobility all working together as a system to be able to give an optimal result. It's just one big shit fight where they have everything fighting against each other. So they're the three main components. And then obviously with that on either side, we need to be making sure we have a warm up. So I recommend some sort of steady state cardio, five to 10 minutes before and after to be able to warm up and to be able to cool down. It's important before you do the mobility and flexibility that you have um, a warm up or uh, something to be able to get moving, okay? You don't wanna go into mobility and flexibility while you're cold. You wanna be warm and, and uh, ready to go. So I know that's a heap to take in. Okay, so if you have any questions, post it below in the comments and I'll try and help you as best I can. I'll make sure I come back and have a look. Um, so today's question of the day, what do I wanna be, be able to ask you guys today is what was the number one thing that you feel you can implement from this video today? What is the number one thing that I've spoken about today that you need to implement that you feel is holding you back the most? So I want you to put that into the comments below so I can come and have a look uh, and, and have a look what, what's holding people back um, and what you're finding most valuable from these videos as well. So I hope you enjoyed episode number two. Um, to get you able to get your questions answered like Wayne did today, Mr. Murphy, uh, who I've spoken to before, which is awesome, uh, post your questions down in the comments as well, okay? And just hashtag um, MotoFit underscore TV in the comments so I know where all the questions are. And what I'll do is I'll go and dig all those questions out. Uh, we'll pick a few to be able to, or a couple to be able to go through on each episode. Um, so if you've got a question that's really, really good that you're hoping to get answered, that you know a lot of other riders and racers will want answered as well, stick it in the comments um, and then we, I can get Jeremy to pull it out 
um, and he will be able to um, have you featured in our next episode. So this is episode number two. You probably haven't even had episode number one uh, yet because it's uh, getting released tomorrow. So we can feature you in, uh, in future episodes. So I hope you guys found this helpful. I hope you found it valuable. I hope it's stuff that you can actually implement and use and it's not just more knowledge, but actual stuff that you can, uh, you can implement and be able to get the results from. So hope you all have a great day. Hope you're all having a great week. Uh, and remember, train hard, race harder. See you guys.